let's look at this problem from the Hibbler book. And it says that we want to determine the magnitude of the acceleration of the slider blocks in problem 12172, right? well, this is 173, uh, when theta equals 150. Now, I didn't put the problem statement for 172, but in that problem, there is an equation for r given, and that is 200 times 2 minus cosine theta. Okay, so we're given that also. Now, if we look over here, notice we've got a theta that's going counterclockwise, and then we've got this 6 radians per second. Notice that's in the opposite direction, right? It's going clockwise. And then we've got our sliders here with a few distances. Okay, so looking at this, if I were to get this on a test or something, I would automatically go to polar coordinates. And the reason for that is, is I've got an angle that's moving, right, that's changing, and then I've got this radial line. So as theta changes, that radial line is you know, moving along this guide. So that indicates to me to use polar coordinates. Now, we want to find the acceleration. Okay, so before we even get started, we've established we need polar coordinates. Let's write out what the acceleration equation is in polar coordinates. We have r double dot minus r theta dot squared. That's our radial term. And then we have the transverse term, which is going to be r theta double dot plus 2r dot theta dot u sub theta. So this is the equation for the acceleration vector in polar coordinates. Now, in order to find the magnitude, I have to figure out what these values are, right? So I need the r, r dot, r double dot, and same thing with the thetas. So let's work on getting those first, and then we can go ahead and find the acceleration vector and then find the magnitude. Let's start with r and find those terms first. Okay, so 200 times 2 minus cosine theta, that was given to us. And just to make it easier, let's expand that. So it's 400 minus 200 cosine theta. We want this at 150 degrees. So we can go ahead and plug in that number if we want. So it's 400 minus 200 cosine 150. What does that equal? That is 573.21, and this is in millimeters. Okay, so now we've got that expression right there, or that value, I should say. Now let's find r dot. So r dot is the first derivative with respect to time of r. Remember, that's what that little dot stands for, first derivative with respect to time. So let's look right here. We want to take the derivative with respect to time. Now, the thing that students forget a lot in these types of problems, they forget about theta. Theta is changing with time. All right, it's not a constant. So you have to remember that when you're doing the derivative. All right, so let's start here. Let's take the derivative of 400 with respect to time. What's that going to be? Well, that's going to be zero, right? So nothing there. Now let's come over here. I've got... Um, the negative 200 cosine theta. Well, we take the derivative of that, we're going to get uh, the negative sine theta, right? So we got that. Negative times negative is positive. So we get sine theta. But then we got to take the derivative of theta. Okay, so that's going to be um, theta dot. Okay, I forgot the 200 here. Can't forget that. So now let's write it in a different order. So we get 200 theta dot sine theta. Okay. Now we want um, this value at 150 degrees, right? I'm going to hold off on filling that in for now because we need to look at theta dot in just a second. So let's find r double dot next and then we'll go back. Okay, so again, we got to find the time derivative. Okay. So doing that, derivative of 200, we don't have to worry about that, it goes to zero. So that means, let's focus on this theta dot term, right? So now we're going to have 200 theta double dot sine theta. 
And then now we got to worry about doing the derivative here of sine. So we're going to add 200 theta dot cosine theta. But now we have theta again, right? So we got to do theta dot. And then let's rewrite this. So we end up with 200 theta double dot sine theta plus 200 theta dot squared cosine theta. Okay, so now we've got these equations. Now I need to fill in the values that we need. Okay, so to do that, let's look at the theta. All right, because I need the theta dot and theta double dot. Theta is 150 degrees. And then what should we put for theta dot? Now I know some of people are, might be thinking, well, that's a constant angle, so it's going to be zero. But that's not the case. Theta dot is like an angular rate. So look over here. We get six radians per second. That's what we're putting for theta dot. Now it's going clockwise, whereas theta's drawn is going counterclockwise. So since it's in the opposite direction, we're going to put negative six radians per second. All right, and then let's do theta double dot. Now what should we put for theta double dot? That's going to be zero because this, the negative six, is constant. So theta double dot is zero because theta dot is a constant. Okay, and just so everybody's clear, the theta dot and theta double dot, those should always be in radians. So you wouldn't have degrees per second. They should be in radians. All right. Now we can take this information, plug it in up here. Okay, so let's just do it down here. So r dot is going to be 200 times theta dot, which is negative 6, times sine of 150. Okay, and that gives us negative 600. That's millimeters per second. Now let's do r double dot, which is here. So we get 200 times 0, because theta double dot here is 0. Um, that would be sine 150 plus 200 theta dot squared, so negative 6 squared cosine 150. And that is going to equal negative 6,235.38 millimeters, whoops, not a room, per second squared. Now we're ready to go. I have everything I need to get these two components here. Okay, so we got the r double dot minus r theta dot squared plus r theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot u sub theta. Okay, now remember that these are the separate components, right? So this is a sub r. This is that transverse component, a sub theta. And I'm going to use this in a minute when I draw a picture. So now let's plug everything in. We need r double dot, which is the negative 6235.38, minus r, which was 573.21, times theta dot squared. So negative 6 squared. That gives us negative 26,870.9 millimeters per second squared. And then let's find that transverse component. So r, 573.21, and then theta double dot is 0, plus 2. r dot is negative 600, and then theta dot is negative 6. So that gives us 7,200 millimeters per second squared. This gives us our two components for acceleration. Now we can find our acceleration vector. So let's write these out. All right, so the negative 26,000 number, that's going to be multiplied by the unit vector u sub r plus 7,200 u sub theta. Now if I want to find the magnitude, we just do the square root of the sum of the squares like we do with any other vector. All right, so take your components, 
square each of them, add them together, and then do the square root. And that'll give us 27,818.8 millimeters per second squared. Or you can put it in meters per second squared if you want. Um, and get 27.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so now we've got this. Now one more thing I'm gonna do, which I didn't ask for, but I'm gonna put it on here anyways. Let's kind of draw out what that means. So if we look at the picture, we've got this guide, which is a basically a curved path. So let's say it looks like this. And we want to be at 150. So let's say that's the horizontal. And let's say 150 is here. Okay, so we've got that theta. Now let's draw out our frame here. So there's the little um, slider. So this is our radial line, right? So the R axis is just going to extend out, right? So that would be R. And then the theta axis, or the transverse axis, that is going to be perpendicular to R in the direction of increasing theta, right? So basically, it's going to be like that, okay? So with that, let's draw our components on here, okay? My magnitude was the 27,818 know, millimeters per second squared. And then I know these are my components. So I have a negative R component, a positive theta. So that means I'm going to be, you know, over here somewhere. All right, so there's my magnitude. And then we can find the components. All right, so my a sub theta would be here and then my a sub r it's negative right so that's going to go down this way and that would be my a sub r okay so that's kind of how you can use these components draw out um, your system on your curved path if you wanted to do that hopefully that was helpful y'all have a good day